visual programming, specifically using Microsoft's Make Code. Let's talk about that. Typically programmers program using text. This is how they code. But then there are, you can do it visually as well. There are other ways of doing it. Now, when it came to uh, our need, for example, for, for, the, for, for the brain pad and how it can be programmed, I was always against uh, pushing students to program uh, using blocks. Uh, because I believe if, you're, if you would do any serious coding, you would have to write code. You would have to see the code and, and, and the scales up. But then Microsoft um, Make Code managed to change my mind, my mind, and this is how they they did it. So if we go to like how it's uh, how the other options that were done in the past, uh, we have been around Scratch. We actually um, uh, Martin did port from our community did port Fermata to BrainPad, the original BrainPad, and we had Scratch working with the BrainPad, uh, which is a another visual programming tool, but. I was not very excited about that because I, I want to see somebody coding. I don't want to see them dragging things because you're, not, you're understanding the concept, but you're not really coding. And then we looked into other options. One of the options, options was Blockly by uh, Google. And Blockly uh, basically is a library where you would drag in blocks and those blocks generate code. Um, nice, beautiful, but it does not really generate code at the end. It generates... Um, it doesn't generate a binary that goes on a microcontroller per se. You can use that as a, 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 a front end uh, to program, to, to, to generate uh, whatever you need to generate. Uh, but then uh, with Microsoft Make Code, and this is what I have here on, on their website, they took this way beyond what I have seen in the past. Maybe the other options have gotten better and there are similar options out there, but this really covered the needs that I, that I have in mind. So I, I think now I can comfortably say that there is, there is a good way, uh, at least for, for when it comes to the brain pad, for a STEM educational tool uh, to work uh, visually. And that's what we're experimenting with uh, now. Now, if you look at their website, they already have different options. There's really nothing to install. You just pick the one of the options, and I have selected uh, Microbit as a programming option. We don't have the brain pad working that. We, ha we haven't done anything with the brain pad and uh, make code just yet. Uh, at this point, we're experimenting with, with the concept uh, to make sure this will actually f fit the needs. And looks like it so far. So when you, when you start a program right here, you can see the um, unstart and the forever starting points. And this is where, like, if you look at an Arduino program or even in, in a, the BrainPad template, if you're using Visual Basic or C Sharp, our template will start with an unstart and a loop, uh, like forever or forget exactly what it's called. But then these two is, make it just a little bit step easier to understand that this is one thing you do on PowerUp and the other one is, is a repeated loop. Uh, for a very beginner. So wh why is this different? Well, I'll show you where it's different. So let's say I want to set um, uh, an LED. I want to set one of the LED plots 0, 0, and I'm going to do this in the forever loop. Uh, and I'm going to set plot LED 0, 0. So first of all, there is a simulator. So you can see here that we have the LED uh, 0, 0, the first LED. Um, lit that's automatically running i didn't even need to click run so th this is a good start so okay uh let me add a uh, delay so i'm gonna go to under basic and i'm gonna select pause i'm gonna add this pause and it's 100 milliseconds so now the program is plotting the pixel pausing plotting the pixel pausing the pixel is not changing or the the one led because we never turn it off and then I'm going to go back to the LED and do unplot zero, 00. And now it's running. So it's blinking. Now not blinking well because it's plotting, waiting, unplotting, and then plotting back on. So the LED is shutting off for a very, very short time. This is a very common problem with beginners. Anyway, so what's, what, what I find here very interesting is that um, I can now go click on JavaScript side, the tab, uh, the JavaScript tab. 
and this will show me the code, like the, the code side of the blocks. So the, I'm not sure what the right terminology here is, but you have blocks and they have the code representation of the blocks. So I look here and I see my code, led.plot. This is, this is object oriented Java, beautiful. This is, um, or JavaScript. Still, this is uh, with, Parentheses and the way you see code, it's very, very similar to, let's say, if you want to learn um, C Sharp um, later on or any other language, Python. So let's say I want to add another delay. I can just copy paste my delay, add it in here, and I can see my LED is blinking properly. I can change the code to instead of 100 milliseconds, make it 1,000. So it's on for, us, uh, for one second, off for one second. So now it recompiled the code, and now look my blocks. The block, the blocks were updated with the code. To me, this is truly amazing. So you can go add blocks, and it generates the code. You can go on the code side, add the actual code, and this goes back and it gets generated on the block side. I did not add the second pause right here. The second pause was added on the code side, and it was automatically created uh, for me under the blocks side. Truly amazing. I love the interface. I love how everything fits together. I love how portable it is. This is all open source, by the way. And then I was trying to think of see how, how would this work with, with the brain pad and start experimenting with things. So for example, I went to music, and I said, like, uh, let's go with Playtone and edit right here. So when I add Playtone, look what happened on the simulator. It automatically showed you where to connect the wires and how to add the speaker. But wait a second, the brain pad has a ton of things already. So imagine how much more you can do as a student or as a teacher without installing any software at all. Nothing. You go to, I don't know, makecode.brainpad.com, for example, and then you have everything you need right on there. And then you can start drawing things on the screen, using the buzzer, multicolor LED, moving servos. You can have a robot dancing. You can do all that without really soldering or doing anything funny like uh, you would have to do today with the, every, every other option on the market. Truly amazing brain pad, truly amazing combination with make code. Now, last thing I would like to add here is that a couple of the things that I learned, let me start, delete this first because it keeps, so it doesn't keep buzzing. So one thing that's really cool that I learned about um, the, the tool, when you download, and this gives you a file that you load on, onto your device, that file includes the source code. So meaning, I can, so a teacher gave a student a file, a project example, that they can load on their device, BrainPad or any other device. When you load it on the device, it just runs. But then, let's say the student wants to modify that file. You don't have to go find the source code. That file includes the source code. So you take that file, load it. Actually, I think you can drag it right onto the screen on the, like the interface. And you will, you will get your code, your block and, and the code on the tool. Another sweet feature is when you share the project, you can publish it. And this gives you a, uh, a link that you can also share with others. Again, teacher, student, they can be at home or on vacation or whatever, and you need help uh, and, or, or a friend, you can send them a link, you can, they can open the link and they'll see your project and they can modify your project. So it's, it's amazing for collaboration. And then they also built on the back end um, a way that the, 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 the platform is not just this interface. There, is, there are ways to share projects. Like I invite you to go on, on uh, Make Code and see the, the different things that like go on there, get inspired, and show you different projects. And this is part of the, uh, the, 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 um, the platform. So once Make Code is ported to a platform, you have this area where you can go and share your projects and your knowledge and maybe curriculum. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what is in there today and what's coming in, in the future. Um, with very limited time that I spent more on Make Code, I'm, I'm truly impressed. Uh, I think this would be a great option for the brain pad, and we're looking into this. Well, we'll keep you updated whether this happens uh, or not. If it happens, uh, I think it's going to be truly amazing. And we're looking forward to see, hearing your feedback. Give it a try. Make Code. MakeCode.com. Go on the website right now. Check it out. See you next week.